So thank you everybody for coming this afternoon. I'm really pleased to welcome uh, Chris and Amelia from um, Software 360 to do their session. Just to make sure the right before I welcome you. Inclusion and accessibility, how can we ensure no one misses out? So thank you very much, Chris and Amelia. I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. It's great to see so many of you in here. You had a choice of which session to join and you chose ours. So thank you for doing that. Really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, my name's Chris Ball and this is my colleague, Amelia Krzyzewska. She'll correct me on that later. It's amazing in terms of pronunciation. But that's OK. Yeah. Um, so we're really thrilled to be exhibiting here um, and sponsoring the theme of diversity, equity and inclusion. And um, we'll talk a little bit about how that's important to us at ECHO and, of course, uh, the customers that we support. And glad to see some of you are represented today as well. So it's really good to have you here. And by the way, shameless plug for the stand downstairs if you haven't been on the stand downstairs. It's the stand downstairs. Uh, by this room, but the lower one, uh, right at the end by the main doors. And so, we have some good suites, so please find, come find, find the warmest place in the area, and that's where we will be. <laughs> um, so uh, let's just talk about what we're going to do. First of all, let's talk about who we are. So, so we provide tools, um, software, technology, if you will, uh, to support our customers on their journeys towards providing engaging equitable and inspired learning experiences uh, to their students. We help them through what we call the ecosystem, sorry, the ecosystem, not the ecosystem, because we're echo, not eco, ecosystem, um, which is a suite of interconnected solutions uh, that include video, interactivity tools, engagement, access, uh, um, uh, assessments, pardon me, and content authoring. Warwick University, plus many others, uh, trust our solutions to help uh, help them uh, drive their learning outcomes. So that's who we are. Um, over to you, Amelia. Thank you. And I think that equity and inclusion are super important to us. I think they are actually in our DNA. We've been doing or we've been providing EdTech for a number of different institutions for over 20 years. And ECHO E3 pillars are grounded in sort of three main principles. And this is the educational equity, this is the evidence and also engagement. And I think the fact that the equity is, is the first makes a real impact because it's in a way, it, it sort of sets the bar and paves the way for the evidence and engagement. And here at Echo360, we're trying to do our best to make sure that equity and inclusion and accessibility boxes are ticked. And this is done through many different things and predominantly by the fact that most of our products Let's move on, yeah. Yeah. Um, have the accessibility features and functionality. So these are, come, are, are over all our products. Uh, apart from that, we also work with the, your kind of pro our product and engineering teams work with people like yourselves to make sure that we address the challenges that you might be having in the kind of regularly held uh, customer success um, meetings, and then the challenges related to accessibility within the hybrid learning as well as asynchronous learning are addressed. Uh, apart from that, obviously, we work. Well, apart from that, we work with third-party companies that help us to understand what's the next trend in terms of the accessibility criteria is we also have um, re internationally recognized qualification, not qualification. Yeah, yeah accreditation. Status. Accreditation, thank you. Uh, that allows us to be com uh, compliant uh, with accessibility. Over to you, Chris. Thank you very much. Oh, hold on, that didn't quite work as well as I would have. So in terms of embedded accessibility tools, um, we have examples such as alt text within uh, Echo Poll and Echo Exam. Um, we've got, uh, so that helps with things like vision impairments and things like that. Um, test it, the ability to extend testing times in ECHO exam as well, or in our assessment tools, again, for those that are going to kind of need a little bit longer in terms of processing time and things like that. Um, and, and also on the ECHO video side, which we're going to take a little look at in a moment, um, things like ARIA, so the accessible rich internet applications labeling for screen reader support, for example. Um, but yeah, we've got lots of other interactivity tools within Echo Video that allow us to, again, make sure that we've got engagement across uh, across the group, regardless of 
uh, capability and ability and so forth. Um, the other sort of thing to mention that's really important is uh, we have our uh, E3 grants uh, program as well, where we award uh, grants effectively to uh, to uh, particular lecturers and academics that are looking to extend the capabilities of the ecosystem uh, to help better the student experience. So, for instance, I think this year it was something like hundred thousand US dollars were awarded to uh, various institutions uh, in the UK. Glasgow and Strathclyde, in particular, were amongst the uh, the recipients of those grants. So. Essentially, it's a really big part of what we do. Uh, it's, you know, the, the student uh, experience is a key part of it, and we support our customers in many ways. Um, so lastly, death by PowerPoint is shortly coming to an end. Um, so 30 minutes, it really is not long enough for us to talk about all of the, it's less than that now, of course, uh, the, um, the capabilities that we have to support uh, engagement and things like that. We're going to cover off uh, two key ones today so echo video i've just mentioned and we'll talk a little bit about some of the uh, echo echo poll which sits under the echo engage umbrella in our ecosystem uh, just in terms of some of the tools that we have in there so just bear with me while i change over okay so uh what i'm going to show you now is um so what you're looking at, yes, what you are looking at is uh, a typical sort of student view, as it were, of the uh, the Echo video platform. Now, this may be um, integrated into your chosen VLE, so whether it's Canvas, Moodle, etc. But this is the, as it were, the the Echo video interface. And well, I've got a number of options in here, so I'm just going to press play on this. Hopefully, her voice won't come booming through the speakers. My God, that means I've set this set this up correctly. Um, but straight away, I can, uh, as a viewer, I've got a couple of options around how I can change what I'm looking at. So I can either look at my sources here and select a specific, uh, just to focus in on one particular uh, area. So maybe the having the lecturer having the lecturer actually talking to me, as it were, may not be something that I want to engage with. I just want to engage with the content and listen to the. Um, the, the sound as well. As you can see, I've also got uh, some uh, closed captioning running as well. Um, so all of the videos um, in Echo Video are, are transcribed automatically through AI, effectively machine generated text. Um, but the captions, this probably won't be a good example of it because we've not had this recaption, but a lot of our customer partners work with um, the a lot of the third party uh, people we work with. So the likes of Speechmatics and people like that who then caption the content according to the correct terminology etc particularly useful uh, in sort of science and very deeply technical content and um, equally i might say well actually i'd rather see um oh, i'd rather see the um let me just bring her back up again so i've lost her there she is um so i'd much rather engage i'd rather engage with the visual element of the uh, the lecturer actually talking to me i may have the slides on a separate uh, or maybe maybe we're talking about specific content that i i can't sort of see at the moment and again um i don't know if any of you have got sort of teenage kids but most of them now are watching uh, things like netflix and things like that with the captions on even if they can hear perfectly well uh, sort of thing so uh, again the, the idea of having some uh, access to, to closed captioning is quite useful. And the nice thing about this is I can make this as big as I need it to, uh, depending upon my uh, needs. Again, I can sort of play around with the look and the feel of the, the, um, the actual, how it's presented to me, depending upon what it's going up against the back of. I can also even move the, uh, the actual uh, place of the, the content around as well. So I can, again, position it according to best, uh, best to how I want to engage with it. So lots of different options in there um, based on uh, sort of yes, accessibility in, 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 its, uh, in its broadest sense. From an engagement standpoint, as a viewer, I've got a number of options as well here. Um, so I'm able to add some notes in as I'm going along, which is going to be useful to me maybe as I'm kind of going through the content. Um, Q&A. Um, so, you know, I might well have a specific question that I want to post either live during the session, or maybe if I'm watching this asynchronously, uh, because I missed the session, I still want to be able to ask my question. I still want to say, yeah, great. 
uh, I've got some uh, commentary here. I'm also able to bookmark the session as well. So if I'm looking at a particular interesting area or maybe an area I want to come back to because I didn't quite follow what was going on, uh, I can bookmark it according to that. And even uh, quite a, a smart thing here called a confusion flag. I don't think you can see the text or whatever. It says flag is confused. So if I click on that, that means I'm telling the, um, the lecturer or the uh, whoever uh, is, is actually running the session. Actually, I didn't quite follow that part. And again, when we look at things like analytics and engagement analytics as, as an instructor, I can sort of see which parts were maybe collectively being uh, not being followed, should we say. So very, very simple um, suite of, of very sort of tools that allow you to, to actually um, get some uh, sort of understanding of uh, make sure that you're, you're kind of catching all those folks and make sure that you're not missing uh, any, any folks from that standpoint. So next part I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to jump into a different um, screen. So bear with me. Uh, where are we? There we go. So, so what you're looking at now is more the sort of instructor view of the same, uh, the same video. So uh, as you can see, as an instructor, I've now got access to some data around how many people have viewed uh, the content, whether you know, where have they engaged? When did they kind of all watch it all the way through? Maybe they didn't watch it all the way through. Um, can I find out which parts resonated? Maybe some parts didn't. Um, and as I go into things like sort of questions and so forth, I can start to look at, you know, what, what where are the, uh, oops, you might have an error loading analytics. So that's probably not a good time to show that. Um, the point is I've got certainly um, access to the ability to then sort of bring up those questions that I showed before. I can respond to those questions in real time as well. Let me reload the video is probably what it needs. Yeah, bear with me, folks. This is the trouble with live television, isn't it? These things always happen. Uh, at least you're going to see a very quick uh, login access into the system there, uh, which you can either do via uh, the VLE or uh, or directly into the system. This is actually the um, the admin view as well, because you've got a few more things up here. But actually, I've now gone into the bit I wanted to show you. And again, yeah, so as you can see, we've changed that a little bit now. So we've actually got some more content in there we can actually use. Um, so the last thing I was going to show, oh, sorry, I will just quickly show you the, uh, the ability, so the transcription side of things as well. Um, so this is a tool that enables me to, you can't see it probably, but um, the ability to actually go in and edit uh, if I wanted to, if I had the time uh, and the inclination to actually edit the content of the transcripts as well. Um, so again, that's quite useful uh, to do if I want to make absolutely sure that it's spot on. And that icon there gives me the ability to go ahead and push that into the closed captioning if I wanted to as well. Last thing to show then, and I'll uh, hand back over to my esteemed colleague, is around interactivity. So um, as well as the ability to actually edit uh, the media, yes. Um, so what, what do I mean by edit the media? Well, um, it might well be that I want to remove certain tracks or maybe re-record the audio, or maybe I want to, you know, re-record my bit again, uh, sort of lecturing that I'm able to do that and then build in my, um, my new version of the video into here. So it's easy for me to remove and add as I'm going along. Uh, I can also trim it down as well. So there's, if there's big sort of um, quiet periods somewhere where I was thinking about something, or maybe I, got it slightly wrong, so I wanted to start again. I've got that option as well. But the last bit was just around um, the polling capability. So particularly for an asynchronous video, this would be useful. Um, the ability for me to go in uh, and add live questions, uh, well, not live questions in asynchronously, but certainly questions into the video that as I'm watching it as a student, I can go along and it, I, as, a, as a lecturer helps me understand Am I getting that level of engagement? And actually, you know, the group of people maybe that didn't quite catch what was going on during this, the live session have got the ability to, to go over the information again and really get a sense of whether they've, uh, whether they've got the, the content or not. Um, so my last point on this is that um, I'm not going to show you the polling aspect now because uh, our newer polling capability, Echo Poll, uh, is going to be integrated into this, which is going to make the polling capability that much more brilliant. Um, so at this point, I'm going to hand over to Amelia again. So thank you so far. Thank you, Chris.
Okay, it's kind of on slides, aren't you? Okay. So I also wanted to add that I'm, but I'm already mentioned that I'm really passionate about um, equity and inclusion to that level that I'm actually doing extra kind of qualification in CIPD uh, to be better equipped with the information than we as a ec tech provider uh, should give to educational institutions. Um, bear with me. <laughs> Consult your notes. Yes, it's so stressful, you know. You're doing well. And you're, you're doing well. And practicing and practicing <laughs> and no. Um, we've got a good crowd in this afternoon yes Lovely. we do do we I, I mean it's quite it's afternoon normally my nap time by the way <laughs> <laughs> if you go to sleep after this yes my boss doesn't know that he cannot call me at between two and three but yes um so uh, chris mentioned and showed you the echo video some like uh sort of a pillar of of our uh company um i also wanted to mention that from my point of view and from company's point of view I, we think that engagement is really connected with students the feeling the sense of belonging uh, and a sense of uh inclusion let's say um so chris has shown you different features of echo video and the fact that we can get students engaged in here you can actually see how we track the engagement so throughout the course you can actually monitor how well were students in involved in your in your classes i also think that sometimes the kind of the belongingness and different engagement variants are diluted because of the you know maybe we lack of our understanding of diversity of sometimes maybe we kind of forget or don't realize necessarily that there are very the multiple uh, intersections that represents us as human beings. So we are not only, you know, one, let's say. There are many intersections in terms of our uh, physical aspects, about social aspects, um, our, um, our life experiences as well. And I think based on that, I don't necessarily believe there is one size fits all solution. Um, Every university is different, every student is different. And for that reason, putting everything in one, you know, putting all the eggs in one basket is not necessarily the way to move forward. Having said that, from an echo perspective, we try to make sure that the accessibility criteria uh, are there across all our products. Uh, Chris has already mentioned the Altex, which can be found, or the accessibility feature can be found in most of our products. This kind of gives the, um, students who are visually challenged ability to consume products we also have the extended time to, sort of time uh, timers on the assessments that we have but today i also wanted to show you um old someone from oxford university actually said classic clickers <laughs> <clears throat> uh, i don't know if you if you've seen them before if you use them before have you some around you have okay so i know uh, who was that was that manchester but anyway, so there, there is a, generally speaking, there is a trend. So either universities go away or they actually purchase more. So I recently sold 500 to Bristol University. We have Sheffield University, LSE. They all use our polling solution. Um, we also have charities like Scope using our polling solution. And the main reason is obviously the fact that they can, they can get students engaged by answering their questions, but some of them, not all of them, but some of them have the braille on it. And there they is, also- Sorry, there is one going around at the moment. There is a braille version. I think that might be over there. So sorry yes. to interrupt. There, it also has the inbuilt uh, vibration motion. So all the students who are visu visually impaired, they are going to be thrilled. They're going to feel accepted. They're going to feel included in your sessions. And I think that's the, the main message that I wanted to share with you today, equity. So it's not about providing everyone with the same tool. I think it's more about making sure that we provide the tools that are necessary for our students to thrive and succeed. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my boss, by the way. <laughs> um, yes, my boss. Hello. Hello. Come in, come in, take a seat, <laughs> take a seat. Um, other thing that I also wanted to say that uh, obviously in your classrooms, you can have the less sort of extroverted, quieter students, more introverted students. They are not very really comfortable you know, saying their opinion out loud and, and sharing their kind of thoughts with the rest of the students. So click us or even your phones, because our solution can be also used with a mobile phone. They can use that. And so the instructors 
have the kind of um, opportunity to see and to check the polls of the class, to check if everyone is on the same page in terms of the understanding. Uh, you can also do polling anonymously. Great. I mean, I'm sure you have you have seen that before. But on a, the fact that you're giving students the um, anon anonymity on foreign, by the way, as you could probably get. <laughs> that was not bad. Actually, that was good. Um, gives them more freedom and more um, security to answer the questions. Uh, and obviously the timely manner that the solutions are, sort of the answers are shown to peers on instructors also give the sense of belonging and acceptance, let's say. Um, let me check. Other thing, I'm sure some of you also deliver, obviously all the things I've mentioned here are great if you want to have engaging synchronous session, but some of you or some of your instructors also deliver asynchronous sessions or asyn they, they give asynchronous tasks or assignments, correct? Yes, so with this, you we are giving students a possibility to answer the questions in their own speed, in their own time to gather the thoughts. And also some students, uh, who are not necessarily native speakers, might, you know, might, they might need a little bit more time to answer. So that solution or giving the sort of asynchronous tasks gives them time to answer the questions. So that's, that is my last slide. Thank you very much for being patient with us. No, <laughs> uh, do you have any questions? Go on. <laughs> I will do my best to answer, okay? I'll do my best to answer. So going back Earlier, you had the option for students to ask questions alongside the video. Yes. Are, are those anonymous? Um, uh, is that a set of yes. Or? Yeah, it can be anonymous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, it, it, I, I guess there's two views on that because, of course, if, if if they're requiring an answer or maybe a session that's, that's you know, I'd like to spend a bit of time one on one. Uh, to kind of talk about that and then clearly we're going to need to know who they are but yes you're quite right there is the ability for, for uh, an anonymous feedback and questions as well yeah any other questions anonymously or otherwise <laughs> so to questions that are actually comments of a education conference or... <laughs> yeah comments would be great as well i mean we've we know that there are some Yes, so we do have echo video users, right? There we yes. go. There's one. Uh, lecture capture. Yes. Lecture capture, yes. Do you have a special name for it? Because some universities do have. No, we haven't rebranded it. So it's lecture capture or? Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Good stuff. Yeah. Go on. You see, that's what I'm saying. So if we had clickers or if we had the mobile phones, you could have answered anonymously. Okay. We can we, talk about that downstairs. Okay. We can definitely talk about this. You can read in my script. How did you get that? <laughs> Wait, which solution are you interested in? <laughs> um, video. Okay. Um, I work in so okay. um, the video yeah. just really like attracted me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thinking about head puzzle. Oh, yeah. Um, but what you shared looked really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh, it must have been good off my demo because that was appalling, even by my standards. No, yeah, absolutely. We'll pop, pop down and see us if that's okay, and we can talk more about what uh, what you're what you're looking at. Yeah. So Echo Three Six is not only the lecture capture, but yes. it's great that you actually you like the idea. There are various products under our portfolio, and I think that's what kind of separates us from other players on the market. That we have the engagement, we have the uh, assessment tool, which is relatively new and new, and also the content creation tool. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more, we are downstairs. We'll be happy to show you um, or demo it to you either today or you know after. But yeah, we'll be more than delighted to talk to you. As I said, we, we work with a number of different universities in the UK and outside. Uh, so it's, if you aren't a customer yet, please join us. But if you are a customer, please come and learn a little bit more about our products, other products. Yep. Okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.